Okay, today we're going to take a look at a rocket and derive the rocket equation. Now what the rocket equation is, is an equation which describes the change in velocity of a rocket as it takes off under its own power. Now the issue with the rocket is that as it takes off, it's constantly pushing fuel out the back end of the rocket to propel itself upward. And the issue that comes with that is that as the rocket moves upward, or really as time goes on, the rocket is getting lighter. So what we're gonna to do today is take a look at the change in velocity of a rocket as a function of its mass and the velocity at which the fuel is coming out of the back end of the rocket. So what we have is an initial mass of this rocket, and we'll show that with mi. And then we have the velocity at which fuel or propellant is coming out of the back end of the rocket, and we're gonna call that v escape, v sc. And so what I wanna do is go through and work out the final velocity of this rocket, or really the change in velocity of the rocket, as a function of the change in mass of this rocket. So this is gonna start with some mass m initial, and that is going to steadily decrease to some final mass, we'll call it m final. And the whole goal here is we're trying to solve for the change in velocity of the rocket. Now there's several ways to solve this problem using different types of physics. What I'm gonna go through and do today is solve this problem using impulse. Now in order to understand how I'm gonna solve this, it's critical that you understand thrust and how thrust is derived. So if you haven't seen a, my video on thrust, click up here and take a look at that video first. So first I wanna look at the impulse on the rocket itself. So that impulse we're gonna call the impulse on the rocket. And from beginning to end, the total impulse on the rocket is going to be the mass of the rocket multiplied by its change in velocity. Now understand that this mass is steadily going to be changing from MI to MF, and we'll deal with that issue in a minute here. Now realize this impulse on the rocket is equal in magnitude to the impulse on the gas. Now the impulse on the gas is going to be equal to the velocity at which the gas leaves the back end of the rocket multiplied by the mass which is burned or the fuel which is burned. And so in an instant, we're gonna say this is the escape velocity of the gas multiplied by the instantaneous change in mass of the rocket itself. So really what we've looked at here and the way I've set this up is the impulse both on the rocket and the gas in a single instant. And the reason I wanna look at a single instant is because at, at any point in time, beginning between the beginning of this problem and the end of the problem, at that instant, there's some particular mass. And in that instant, the rocket's gonna go through a change in velocity as a result of the fuel being pushed out of the back end of the rocket. And the fuel which is pushed out of the back end of that rocket is in that instant going to be some, some minuscule amount, we're gonna call it dm. And what's important to recognize in this problem and in solving this problem is that these two impulses are equal in magnitude to one another. And so we're simply going to set these two terms equal to one another. Now I do want to point out here, we have the mass times the change in velocity equal to the velocity of the gas times the spent fuel or the mass of the spent fuel. And realize these two velocities are completely different. This is a constant value. The velocity with which the gas is going to exit the rocket relative to the rocket is going to be held at a constant value. The change in velocity of the rocket, well, that's, that's the actual change in the velocity of the rocket, which is different from this V. So be careful there. In a similar fashion, the mass of the rocket is not the same as the mass of fuel which is spent in an instant. And in fact, we could go so far as to say these are related to one another. If this rocket starts out with a certain mass and then pushes some mass out the back end of the rocket, the change in mass of the rocket is equal to the fuel which has been spent. So we could say dm, the spent fuel, is equal in magnitude to the change in mass of the rocket but it has the opposite sign. So I'm gonna make this negative to show that as fuel is spent out the back end of the rocket, the rocket is in fact getting lighter. That's all this negative means. So substituting this in here, 
I'm gonna put the negative right there because it feels icky to put it over here. And what we're gonna do now is rearrange this to set up a differential equation. So realize what this equation is telling us is what is happening in an instant, in a single instant, based on the mass of the rocket and the escape velocity of the fuel, there's going to be a change in velocity and that is related to the change in mass of the rocket. And so what I wanna do is look at these changes not in a single instant, but over a summation of time or really a summation of changes in mass and therefore changes in velocity. You'll notice time is not a part of this. We're not using kinematics or Newton's laws or anything like that. We're just taking a look at impulse. Now to set this up so that we can look at all of our changes in velocity and all of our changes in mass, we need to set up a differential equation. So to set up a differential equation, we're gonna separate out our variables. So I've pulled the mass over here uh, so that it can sit next to this dm because we're going to wind up integrating our masses. We're also gonna wind up integrating our velocities and I've left Chosen to leave this velocity over here because I don't want you to accidentally think that this velocity is related to this change in velocity of the rocket. So we've related the changes and I want you to realize we can take a look at all of the changes in velocity and relate them to all the changes in mass according to this equation. And realize we can look at this as definite integrals. The change in velocity from some value vi to Vf is going to be equal to this function as we go from some initial mass to some final mass. And so to solve this differential equation, we simply work out the integral to each side. I'll clean this up a little bit. And realize Vf minus Vi is in fact the change in velocity of the rocket. And that leaves us with this function here, which is typically known as the classical rocket equation or the ideal rocket equation. And all this does is relates the change in mass of the rocket as it moves upward to the change in velocity of the rocket. Now what this leaves out is external forces such as gravity and air resistance. But what this does, which is quite important, is this accounts for the change in mass of the rocket as it takes off upwards. So this is the rocket equation, and that's all for now.